Hey guys and welcome to this week's installment of Tuesdays with Lauri. My name is Lauri Laukkanen and I'm one of the editors at SLR Lounge. You can also find me on Facebook at Lauri Laukkanen Photography. In this week's installment of Tuesdays with Lauri we're going to be taking a look at my newest photograph, a conceptual portrait titled Into Ashes. We're going to open up Photoshop and break down the Photoshop file layer by layer and along the way I'm going to explain you guys some of my thought process behind this image. With that said, let's open up Photoshop and let's get started. So here you guys can see the image straight out of camera. As you guys can see, I've been doing quite a lot to this image in Photoshop. There's no fire in this image. The sky is a bit blown out or actually totally blown out. And uh, there's a lot of stuff that I had to do for this image in Photoshop in order to achieve the look uh, that I was going for. So let's start by going through this uh, image layer by layer. Uh, here, the first layer that I have is just a tiny orange glow that I added underneath these two layers here that are the fire layers. I'm gonna show you guys these now first. So let's put them on. So this is the fire that I had. And these are from two separate images. Let's see if I can show you guys this image here. So as you guys can see, the fire was real fire. We really lit this dress on fire. And uh, I just noticed that this form of the dress here was perfect for what I was going for. So I just took this half of the dress and masked it in, masked it in here on the image. So turning it on and off, you guys can see the layer mask looks like this. So I used the first a really soft uh, round brush to kind of do the big selection masking and then I used a uh, smoke brush to kind of get this random texture for this mask. So that's the fire and the first orange glow that I added. Then I have a curves adjustment layer that I used to brighten up and change the color of the fire a bit more to kind of match with the dress better. So that's here and then I have another glow layer which adds a bit of glow on this uh, wooden planks here underneath the dress. Then we have a curves adjustment layer that just brings down the highlights a tiny bit as I felt that the blown out sky was a bit too bright in my opinion. And then we have a layer here which just gets rid of this tiny bit there. So just cleaning up the um, borders of my image. Then I have a texture that I applied on the lower parts of the image to kind of get a more rugged feel for the fire and the planks and the lower parts of the image. I made sure to not apply it on our model's face. And then after that I have three curves adjustment layers that are kind of just the first dodge and burn layers. I'm kind of just uh, highlighting some of the areas that I want people to focus more at and then darkening down the areas that I don't want people to look at that much. Then I have a stamp visible layer just to kind of bring it all back together and continue. So then I have a sky layer here, which I used to kind of get, because the sky was blown out, but I wanted to have something dramatic there. So I added these clouds and uh, a curves adjustment layer clipped on it to kind of get a nice dark vignette up here. Then we have another stamp visible layer again. Then we have another curves adjustment layer, which does the first uh, very rough color grading for this image. Just I'm going for this a bit more yellowish, greenish, warm tones. Then I have a hue and saturation layer that kind of affects the reds in this image. And then I have this layer here, which I used to kind of just make the sky a bit more yellowish. So it's uh, a yellow soft brush down at an opacity of 37% and then uh, turn on the color blending mode. Then we have, again, three layers of textures, first, second, and third. So pretty rough textures on the sky and the bottom parts of the image. Again, I'm making sure not to have the texture go too much on top of my uh, model. Then here I have a layer which affects the saturation of these yellow areas here and the dress. So it's just a layer that I kind of turned down the saturation from and then masked out the areas that I wanted it to affect. So these areas are a bit more desaturated than the rest of the image. 
Then we have a hue and saturation layer which affects uh, the greens just a tiny, tiny bit. You probably won't even notice it. Then we have, again, a stamp visible layer and a curves adjustment layer that I used to brighten up the middle of the image a bit. I kind of felt that I, this was a bit too dark here and I want the viewer to focus at this area particularly, so I just brightened that area up a tiny bit. Then, the next thing I'll zoom in to show you guys when blending in textures or two very different elements, like here I'm blending in the flames of the fire and the dress, uh, the blending and the, is, isn't usually that nice. So what I've noticed is by using uh, the um, oil paint filter, we can kind of smoothen the edges and get it to blend in together a bit better. So that's what I have here. I'll click this on. You guys will see how it now it kind of smudges the things together and that way blends them in a bit a bit better. I've pulled down the opacity down to about 50% so that it's not totally kind of painterly, but it still has some texture from the original image, but then it also has 50% of this oil paint smudginess in it. So that way it blends in a bit better. Let's try to zoom out. And I have a final layer here, which is a first sharpen layer. So that's what you use, usually should do after the oil paint. The oil paint smudges everything out. So after that, you need to sharpen the image once again. So that's what I did here. At this stage, I took a break. I noticed my Photoshop file was a bit too big in order. Uh, the image was starting to get very laggy and the editing got slow. So I took a break and uh, closed this Photoshop file and continued in a new Photoshop file, which I'll show you guys here. So I opened up another version of this and continued in a new Photoshop file. And this way, just kind of uh, uh, made Photoshop my workflow a bit uh, quicker and more efficient. So this is the stage that we were left in in the previous Photoshop file. And this is from where we're going to now continue. So here I have another sharpen layer here, which sharpens up just the middle parts of the image. I've masked it out with a gradient to kind of get this nice soft edge around uh, the mask. But I just sharpen up the middle parts of the image. Then this here is a liquify layer. So in this image, the model is not that important. It's the concept. And in this sort of an image, I would usually go in and kind of use the liquify tool to match the real life situation to the idea that I had in my head. So here we had a slight problem that the dress was a tiny bit too big for a model. And these hand uh, areas here were huge. So I kind of felt that I wanted to make them smaller. I wanted uh, the hair of my subject to look a bit more finished. So I changed that part as well. So if I click this on and off, you guys will see I've touched the hair. Uh, and uh, also liquefied these hand areas here and changed the form of the dress just a tiny bit. Nothing major, but kind of made it a bit more cleaner and more finished. Then we, I, I have a hue and saturation here, uh, which just desaturates the layer, uh, the image a tiny bit. Then I have a curves adjustment layer that uh, color grades the image a tiny bit more a stamp visible again or actually sorry this one this is not a stamp visible layer what this is is an iris blur so if you guys take a look at the edges down here for example and i click this on and off you guys can see how it's blur blurring those areas so that's what this layer does and to make this blur not look as artificial i added noise to the edges of the image to kind of get it to look a bit more natural and organic then I have a controlled uh, dodge and burn layer here, like uh, that's the dodge, that's the burn. And when we turn this on and off, you guys can see just dodging and burning, highlighting some areas and darkening other areas. So that's what I have here. And then we're almost done. This layer here, again, just a small sharpen. I did four different separate sharpens to this image uh, altogether. Then I have one last 
uh, yellow layer here adding a bit more glow to this image and I saw this part here which kind of disturbed me so I got rid of it to kind of get more border control in the image and then darken this area here and did some final hue and saturation and color grading so here I'm changing up the green hues just a tiny bit and the final curves adjustment layer that brought in a bit more blue into the image into the shadows so that's pretty much it so I hope you guys enjoyed this week's video and as always if you have any questions or requests make sure to leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to help you all out if you enjoyed this week's video, make sure to like, share and subscribe. And with that said, see you guys again next Tuesday. Bye.